Hi, welcome to Shivin's business. Um, you start something of your own, and then you um, you run it very successfully for many years, and then you have to close it down. Do you look at it as failure, or do you look at it as something that just happens and you move on with a lot of learnings, of course? My guest today is Sandhya, who ran a very popular decor store called Sanctum in Mumbai, and I was a huge customer, a very regular customer, and she actually closed it down a couple of years ago. I'm going to talk to her today about her journey and uh, what it felt like and what she is doing now. Hi, Sandhya. Hi, Deepika. <laughs> Lovely to be here. I'm very Thank excited. Thank you so much. Welcome <laughs> to Shimi's business. Thank you so much. Um, so, first, tell me a little bit more about uh, you know what you've done, like your what you studied, etc. So, who are you? Wow. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I graduated from the National Law School of India, Bangalore, um, more than. 20 years ago actually. Okay. Uh, I also had, I think, many passions, many interests, so I used the last 20 years to explore many of them. Um, I, was a, I was in theatre, I was a radio jockey, um, I was in management, I was in wow. Web 1.0 in content and technology, which continue to be loves of mine even today. Um, I was in art, um, and for the last nine years I've been in retail. Um, I've been a writer and a voiceover artist as well. Uh, blah blah blah. <laughs> okay, so we'll come to one of those. We'll come to Sanctum. So tell okay. me a little bit about Sanctum. How it started and what was it all about? Sure. Um, I got into retail with my first brand, which was a Delhi-based brand that I brought into India. Um, that I brought into Mumbai. Sorry, and I brought it in in partnership. While I was exploring the whole retail market and understanding how to go about it in India, you know, what the pitfalls were and how to crack it, um, I felt that there was a gap in the market for, for nice design-led but not overpriced, okay. design-led but not designer-priced mm -hmm. <laughs> furniture and home decor, something that was a little contemporary but uh, inspired by India. Okay. And that's how the idea of Sanctum came about. Um, I just went ahead and took the leap. Uh, I by then started developing relationships with vendors. Mm -hmm. I kind of understood how to uh, do the whole, you know, looking for space and doing it up really yeah. quickly. You kind of know the things that you should not be spending too much money or time on and the, where you need to be focusing. Um, that's really how Sanctum came about. My vision was to create like a contemporary chain of stores, home decor stores, sort of like an Indian pottery barn if you may, with, with very interesting design stories inspired from India, inspired from other parts of the world, but very uniquely us, very uniquely Sanctum. And Sanctum itself meant like your safe, happy space. Mm -hmm. So the idea was, you know, to surround yourself with things that you loved. It's not so much to be showy or ostentatious, but just to create a space that defined you, that was uniquely you in this mad chaos that was outside. <laughs> and you ran it for how many years? For close to six years, actually. Wow. Yeah, wow. 2011 to 2017. It was a very popular store. I saw a lot of visibility, I saw a lot of coverage, and obviously it did well for six years. Then what happened? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, um, popularity, visibility are definitely some things that 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 we we were blessed to have. Uh, we did this with no marketing budgets. It was just that you know, uh, again, we had stories to tell, and we found interesting venues to tell them. And uh, you know how they say, right? When you're desperate, you can you can get really yes. creative. <laughs> so that was that part of it. But in terms of a business itself, mm -hmm. I'll be very honest. It was. While we were not doing, uh, while we were not bleeding money, mm. it was like we were running to just stay in the same place, okay. right? It's one thing if you have like your first year where you're not able to make rents and stuff. Mm. I, again, I got lucky in that we were starting to make enough money that rents and salaries we could make. But if by year three you're still struggling to do that, costs mm. go up, mm. you know, by then you want to start investing in design, mm. you want to start investing in your store will need to be run, you know, redone up, yeah. things like that. All of these start hitting you beyond a point. Um, you need increased warehousing, um, your customers want more services, mm. you know, free deliveries, things like that. Um, all these start hitting you after a while. Um, for me, 
I would have happily stayed in that place. I didn't mind the struggle of it mm. if I saw a bigger play at the end of it, right? Yeah. For me, this was not going to be like my passion project where I had this boutique and I filled it with mm. things that I loved. Mm. It was not that. I had a very clear vision. Mm. Uh, we needed to build a team. We were going to create design stories, get things manufactured, get sourcing from the best of India. Mm. Um, all of this required, I think, a lot more deep pockets, one that I had access to. Two, I think I was overly optimistic about just how how much I could organize the market, right? The furniture and home decor market in India is very disorganized. That's a well-known fact. But I was, I think, very idealistic. I thought, you know what, I'm a lawyer. I've been in management. Let me go in there and let me try and organize it myself. Mm -hmm. To that extent, I, I did, I would sort of, I, I became a part of the Furniture Traders and Manufacturers mm -hmm. Association. And I was constantly talking to them about bringing on board more and more of the traditional handicraft manufacturers. Um, about getting getting more getting more organized with supply chain timelines deliverability accountability mm. but but I think it's we're still a good three to five years away from any kind of organization in this sector and it online sort of yeah uh, you know, uh, how did that affect did sort of did video kill the radio star <laughs> kind of thing yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yes and no mm. uh, uh, again very very frankly speaking I was very I was very clear that for me, online was a necessary extension of my brand. I saw it very seamlessly, mm. right? For me, there was going to be no difference between the consumer experience as far as the physical store and the online store was. Mm. But the cost of the online experience yeah. was not something a small brand like yeah. me could completely absorb, right? Could I offer free deliveries all over India? Not someone like me. Um, could I could I afford for returns to happen and I pay for the return yeah. and you know or a damage that happens in transit? How are you going to absorb that cost? Yeah. I I wasn't I wasn't at a point where I could absorb that cost. On the other hand online coming in was actually great for me because it created a market. Mm. Home decor as a category didn't really exist in India. You had one or two brands that, mm. that had as an extension of their um, clothing line, they'd also have like a small home decor yeah. sector. And then if you see by 2013 or so, it just started booming, right? Mm. All the big names came in. Suddenly there was this virgin sector that was mm. untapped the concept of going to a home store and buying something yeah. was getting new I mean home store I meant online or mm. physically as well so it created the category for me um, I myself could have put my products on there but again there were a lot of limitations right the amount of quantities with which I manufactured what I was willing to absorb in terms of damages in terms of return costs it's it's a, it's a sort of fine tuning that 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 for a lot of small retailers like me it was a cost too high for us and perhaps we were a little ahead of time mm. for this sector in so that clearly, sense. clearly, offline retail is facing a challenge. Definitely. It is facing Everywhere, a Everywhere, yeah. across all sectors, yes. So when you decided to sort of close it down, mm -hmm. did you at any point look at it as failure? Or did you say that, um, no, these are learnings and you, were you much in fact about it? How did it affect you? Uh, okay. How did it affect me is a little different from what I'm going to do. I'll come to both. Um, I actually spent a lot of time uh, trying to, um, when, I, when I got a sense that, you know what, I'm not doing something right. I shouldn't be, this shouldn't be this much of a struggle. What am I not seeing in this picture? Yeah. And, you know, um, and, and I started going out and speaking to a lot of people. And I realized that it was going to, what it would take for me to actually be able to grow this brand, which would mean that I would need to invest in my own manufacturing, invest in huge amounts of warehousing, infrastructure, mm -hmm. and of course the retail costs, right, uh, which would go up as well. Um, and then the, the teams that I would need to set in place for all of that, I realized that I had done so many experiments, you know, over the last six years and I didn't have the wherewithal at this point in my life to, to do more experiments for another three years or whatever it would take to get that mix right. Um, the day the penny dropped, I still remember it was a Friday uh, and I said, oh my God, I I'm going to have to shut this down or, or sell this off to somebody. and. Um, that weekend, I was devastated because, you know, you put your heart and soul into this. It's take it's time away from my family. It, you know, there are days when you're just traveling all the time to 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 not very glamorous cities of India, but all of it is worth it because you have this vision that you want to create. Um, the day that you realize that, wow, you know what, 
I'm not in the right place, I don't have the right infrastructure, I don't have the right uh, uh, support system in order to do this. Yes, it was, it was devastating, but the Monday morning, I began the process of um, dismantling, trying to sell off, mm -hmm. trying to, I mean, and then I was just a robot. To me, I said, this is the best thing I can do for this business. It, it, it's like a child that you have to send off to college, right? You'd love to keep the child with you in your house and, you know, wake up to a cuddle every morning, but you know you have to let it go and mm -hmm. that's the best thing for the process. So I think that's a wonderful thing to do because you can't just hold on to it and then bleed in the process. Yeah. And then you have people to pay, you know, salaries and your vendors. Absolutely. It's just to let Absolutely. go. Absolutely. And, and to your question about whether I see this as failure, uh, I mean, I often joke that, you know, a failed entrepreneur is a valuable commodity, mm -hmm. but seriously, in terms, I don't see this as failure. It, I, I think one of the key aspects of being a business owner or an entrepreneur is also knowing when you've got to let it go, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, too many people I see hanging on to passion projects mm. or, you know, just out of ego or what will people say or who will I be if I'm not this? I was yeah. Sanctum, right? Mm. To me, yeah. I didn't have an identity outside of that, but that's not true. Sanctum was, was a baby that we were creating mm -hmm. and this baby, it's time had come. So yeah. it's time to sort of time to let, let, let it go, let it go. No regrets. Nice. I slept, I slept like a baby and, and you know, it's, it's huge. I have very fond memories, but not a single regret about it. I always say something that doesn't make you grow and something that doesn't make you happy, mm -hmm. it's time to let go. Absolutely. Uh, so Absolutely. what do you do now? <laughs> okay, um, having like sort of changed so many careers and for me it was always that, you know, oh, this looks interesting, is this something I could do um, and I would do it, right? That's, and opportunities have always come my way. For the first time in my life, I, I took like six months off just to think about what I wanted to do. I kept myself very busy during this time. I did a lot of uh, testing, mid-career testing, you know, mm. uh, looked up um, uh, coaches. Um, I, I also used this time to kind of fix my house up. Ten years of running a home decor store, my own home was kind of <laughs> collapsing. <laughs> um, I kept myself really busy, but what all of this made me do was to just think about what my, what direction I wanted my life to take. Mm. Um, I realized that one, I've always been passionate about science and wellness. Mm. My own parents are doctors. Um, I myself have uh, have been really passionate about fitness mm. and I decided that you know I want to build my life and want to build my career in this area of wellness fitness and something that can that can really teach people mm. holistically mm. how to be fit how to be well and as a lawyer again I hope to be able to get involved with public policy and spread this message we seem to have lost a lot of what the best of what our culture had to offer mm. in terms of being mindful in terms of eating well, in terms of having a healthy life, um, maybe maybe I have a role to play in bringing all of that back and spreading that message. So now I work with an American fitness and wellness company. It's an online company. It's called Kenzai.com. I've brought the brand to India and I'm hoping to spread that message. So what is Kenzai all about? Um, Kenzai means sustained wellness. Okay, it's an online program that in 90 days will take you to the peak of your fitness. And this we do through very safe exercises that can be done anywhere. So it's meant for busy working people. Um, you should be able to do these exercises in any place you are. And I myself have been doing Kenzai for five and a half years. Okay. So yeah. I've done it like you know, in a veranda in Muradabad, okay. on a beach, you know, okay. inside my hotel room, in my auntie's house, anywhere you can do the workouts. Um, the, Nutrition is the very other important. 80% of any kind of uh, wellness plan is nutrition. So understanding food, it's not about starvation, it's not about fad diets, it's not about eliminating food groups which are essential to your well-being. It's really knowing what to eat, when to eat, how much to eat. And again, you know, and also when you're at a wedding, when you're at a buffet, when you're at a working lunch, how do you make choices that are correct for you? skilling and understanding that knowledge we do that through training lessons and how do you keep somebody on a program for 90 days you know we build this community we have an accountability and support system and once you're through with the 90 days you're fully equipped to manage your fitness for life but more importantly there's a mental conditioning reorientation that happens 90 days is a great time for habit building this is now built a habit for life that's the whole idea sounds interesting and you sound like someone who's 
you know, sort of enjoying this now? You know, sometimes it's, it's I, there's sometimes when you kind of find your, um, your flow, mm. it's, it's no longer a struggle. Mm. You know, um, I'm doing, a, um, I had sales and marketing for Kenzai in India. I'm an assistant trainer with Kenzai. I'm also um, skilling to be a business and life coach. But when you see that, that this is what brings all of your energies and, you know, you're, you're, it's, it's like you're slipstreaming. Mm. You can just do it effortlessly. I live it. I breathe it. And okay. I, I'm, I'm flying with it, I think. <laughs> That's really nice to hear. So I'm very happy about the fact that, you know, what we really wanted to talk about in this video was the fact that, you know, you, I was a customer at Sanctum. So even I know, you know, so, uh, so this whole thing of actually having to, you know, shut down something mm -hmm. which was very important to you. Yes. And then learning from it and moving on and shutting it down at the right time. Yes. That this is, it's okay. It's yeah. perfectly cool. That's what we wanted to talk about. Don't hang on to it because of an ego, because that's who you are. Yeah. And move on and then maybe find something which you enjoy doing as much as you possibly did your first venture. Yes. Yeah. So I wish you all the best. Thank you so yeah. much. And thank you so much for being on She Means Business and talking to our viewers. I love your brand. So thank you for having <laughs> thank me. Thank you so much. <laughs> And to all my viewers, till next time, stay tuned, stay happy and stay focused. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Do also follow us on Facebook. And to know more about what we do, visit our website. And don't forget to share this video with your friends.